Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing The Few and Cursed by Rock Manor Games, as well as the Deluxe Expansion. Let's go ahead and start with the base game. The Few and Cursed is a game for one to four players, plays in about one to two hours. It is a competitive deck building game with kind of a, an open world type of feel to it. So here we have just a few art prints for the game and our rule book. Couple different variants here, as well as a cooperative way to play the game. And then references for the cards. And then a quick reference on the back. Our punch board for the game, we have uh, tokens that represent water, which is essentially money in this game. In different denominations. We have a first player token down here. And then we have some tokens here. I believe these are for the, the artifacts in the game. Let me see. Yeah, they all have a set of colors. So these are the, the four different sets of artifacts in the game, three of each color. And this all punches out really well. So that's nice cardboard there. Here we have the game board itself. So there is this side of the game board, but it does appear to be double-sided. With the other side just seems to be a night view of the same game. I haven't seen this side yet, so I'm gonna put it on this side. So having looked at both sides of the board, I'm gonna keep it on this side, but they are different. There are different pathways that you can see here, and also some of these icons are different. This one, this side of the board appears to be the advanced side, I would say just from a glance, just because there are more of these icons on them, which are things you have to use to move around. All the players are gonna start in San Andreas. That's kind of the central hub of the game, but let's get back to the other components in our box here. So we've got a few cards that seem to have escaped. They're plastic. Just gather those up and take a look at those real quick. So this is a deck building game and um, during the course of the game, you're going to be adding cards to your character's deck. You do start with a uh, specific deck for your character. These are some of the characters you can play. Um, so these appear to be upside down. Let's try this way. There we go. So first we have some encounter cards. So encounters are something that you're going to do on your turn. If you're in San Andreas, the central city, your encounter consists of either buying from the market or getting jobs. Jobs are uh, essentially hidden secret objectives that you can score extra points for. And then obviously the store is equipment that you can attach to your character. But if you're outside of San Andreas, you're going to draw an encounter card during your turn. These are, I believe, the cursed encounter cards, which only uh, you only draw if you are on certain spots of the board. Um, most notably the four corners, but also some of the camps. If you can see here, it's kind of got this misty aura around it. That's a cursed area. So you have to draw one of these cursed events. And when you draw a cursed event, you're going to choose one of the three options on the card and you're going to resolve it. So in the case of the Rattlers card here, you either have to spend three movement to evade them. You have to spend three combat to fight them. And that also allows you to trash a card in your hand or discard pile, or you're gonna get knocked out and you're gonna lose a health. And there are quite a few of these cursed encounter cards. Let's go ahead and just take a look at another one real quick. The Map Man Kids, you spend five combat to fight with them, which gives you three ammo if you succeed. You can pay them off by giving them three water you buy a map and you get to move to any runes location. 
There are essentially three location types on the board, and that depends on what's in the, the opening for that area. So for instance, this I believe is a camp, and then this would be, I believe a rune. I know that this is a canyon. So that would allow you to move or you get sucker punched if you can't do those other two and you lose a health. So those are the cursed encounters there. And then you get into the regular encounters and that depends on where you are on the board. Again, if you're in a desert location a ruins location or a canyon location, you resolve that perspective event. So if you were in the canyons, when you draw this card, a group of bandits poke their heads out of the rocky close above you, they demand all your water. You can give them all your water or you can fend them off by fighting, which cost you to combat. You're going to get these uh, combat or here um, movement based off the cards that you're playing that round. Uh, but we'll see that a little bit later. So those are the, the regular events, the non cursed events. So then we get to, I believe these are the most wanted bounties. Yes, because they're single sided. So there's two types of bounties in the game, and that's an action you can take on your turn. Um, there are regular bounties and then there are most wanted bounties. These are the most wanted bounties because you can tell because they're single sided. And these are sort of the, the one off, um, more difficult things to defeat. And these are actually the four in game bosses, which we'll see later. They have miniatures for them, but you see how you defeat them is basically just with a certain number of combat. And then by defeating them, you get a reward in this case, it's grit. Grit is essentially VP. It's how you win the game. So those are the, the four bosses. Then we have the other most wanted bounties. So these are not the bosses, but these will be cards that'll be stacked on top of the bosses. So essentially you'll have four stacks of cards. The bottom will be one of the bosses. And one of the ways that the game ends is if three of the bosses are defeated. But these are other most wanted bounties. And again, they require a certain number of combat to defeat and they give you a reward. This one gives you water and grit or VP. This one gives you health and VP and so on. So that's more of the most wanted ones. Here we see regular wanted cards. There are four of these and they are double sided. Another thing you can do during your turn is to defeat a regular bounty. These again are defeated by combat and they have a reward for them. The interesting thing about these is that when you defeat, say you defeat the uh, Talbot's gang here and uh, you flip the card over and then you can continue using your combat if you have any left to defeat this side of the card. And so if you do that, you flip it back. And if you still have more combat, you can defeat them again, flipping the card back and forth each time. There is a location for each one of these. So you have to be in a desert to fight this one, canyons, runes, and you have to be in a cursed location to fight the crows. But those are the regular bounties. And then we have our character cards here. So each character obviously has a name. They have a way of turning ammunition into combat value. So the redhead here, I believe is the strongest combat character in the game. She turns two ammo into four combat power. They also have a passive ability or an action. So two of them have passives. They have it all the time. The action you have to use your once around action in order to get that. But um, my Senus here just as an action can get seven water once around. They also have a, a double sided. The cards are also double sided because you can get cursed during the game and then you become your cursed form. So my Sanus in his curse form does a little more damage instead of two for three. He does two for four, but now he has a penalty once per turn. He has to spend a water or suffer a damage. So those are the four characters. We have some extra bags. Here are our player pieces as well as our monster pieces. So four characters in the game. Each one has its own miniature.
And then the four sort of in-game bosses or monsters of the game have their own character, their own figure as well. So once that card at the bottom of the most, most wanted deck is revealed, these monsters will actually come out onto the board and they will move around. And if they ever move to San Andreas, that's another way that the game ends. So there's all our figures. We have some more cards here. Okay, so there are essentially two types of cards, uh, cards like these in the game. There are the cards that you start in your deck, which you can see here. They obviously have the character's name on it. So this character will start with, I believe these are 10 cards uh, starting her deck. We'll start with these 10 cards in her deck. And those will be the cards that she plays on the round. You have a hand size of four, so you'll draw four. And then you have another deck of cards, which is kind of gonna be the, the general supply, I guess you could say, although you don't buy from them directly. So here are all the character cards real quick. And they each kind of specialize in something. You know, Masena specializes in getting money, so he typically has more cards that give him water, whereas the redhead kind of specializes in combat, so her combat cards are a little bit stronger than everybody else's, or she has more of them. Also, the size of your deck is different per character. Some characters only have, uh, I believe, eight cards instead of 10. So it's kind of interesting how they do that. And then you're gonna have sort of a, a market deck. These are slightly bent, but not too badly. You're gonna have a market deck of these additional cards, and these are just gonna be shuffled up, and I believe there's more of them. But um, one of the things you'll do, one of the first things you'll do every round is you will draw two cards from the central deck and then you'll choose one of them to put in your hand for that round. Um, and that's a way to add to your deck as well as a way to sort of specialize your deck in the way that you see fit. Let's see if we've got any more of this. So here's some more of those cards. So again, these will all make up the sort of central deck there that every character will draw from. Uh, these are actually the, these cards here are the, the relics, I believe they're called. So those tokens that we saw earlier that we punched out, those will go into one of the four outer areas. So for instance, Mountain View here, there'll be say the three red relics and i believe it play, depends on player count but whenever you go here one of the things you can do is you can acquire one of those relics so you're just going to take one of these tiles and then you gain that card and this becomes a card in your hand and these are more powerful than your normal cards i mean this one has four combat it's also worth points at the end of the game but here we just have more of the the sort of um, the supply deck. So a lot of movement cards, some generic combat cards, and so on. These will be the cards that you choose from at the start of the round. Again, you're drawing two and keeping one for the round. So you can kind of see like what you need to do that round and, and pick the card that's most appropriate. Let's go and look at our, look at our player boards next. So each character has their own player board. You can see that it is double layered, which is nice because you're going to use cubes to track all these stats and it helps to keep them in one place. The reason you have your own for each character is that each character has essentially a different stat line as well as different starting resources. And instead of giving you cards for that, they just printed the boards. So for instance, Annabelle here starts with five water, whereas the redhead starts with none. But the redhead can have, uh, starts with four health, uh, two ammo with a max of four and zero cursed with a max of four. Whereas Annabelle only starts with two health, still has two ammo with a max of four, starts with zero cursed with a max of five. And the max is essentially when you become cursed during the game and you can increase that. You also have some spots here at the bottom for any jobs you currently have, any completed jobs you've done, your items, and then your backpack. So you can have weapons, you can have two one-handed weapons or a weapon that takes both hands, and then you can have two items during the course of the game. 
So here we have just some cubes. And these are, again, just keeping track of your stats during the game. They're different colors for the different characters. But just simply, you know, this is going to be your health, your ammo. You're going to have one for your cursed. And then you're going to have two additional in different colors, one for your ammo maximum and one for your cursed maximum. We have some additional cards that escape there. And the last few things we have in this box right there. So we have rings just to put on your figures to denote who is what color. So, you know, the redhead doesn't always have to be red, but I'd probably make her red every time. Just because that seems appropriate. You have uh, discs. These are for the relics. Again, that will, will go out at the corners of the board. Um, so you do have discs and then you're going to apply stickers to those discs. Everybody's favorite thing. And then two small deck of cards here. I believe these are, so these will be the items and then the jobs. So we'll go through these and then we can do the expansion box as well, or I guess it's not an expansion box, deluxe box. There we go. So anything with a water cost in the top left is gonna be an item. That's something you can buy from the store. The store is an action you can take when you're in San Andreas. So instead of taking one of the other actions in the game, like attacking a bounty or um, resting or things like that, you can, if you're in San Andreas, take a town action that allows you to shop and then also, or it allows you to get jobs. So anything with a water cost is an item and these go just to your player board and one of your two backpack slot slots. So obviously you can only have two, but they give you bonuses and these are once around bonuses. So a horse gives you plus two movement once around. Here we have a rifle. So the rifle is not a backpack item, obviously it's a weapon. And you can see that it has two guns shown here. So it's a two handed weapon. So if you get the rifle, you can only have the rifle, but it gives you plus two combat every round. Then you've got you know, boots that give you movement. You have potions that decrease your curse value. Things you would expect to see. You have a Gatling gun, which I want a Gatling gun, three ammo for nine power, a revolver. So a whole bunch of things that you would kind of expect to see in a game like this, essentially, you know, giving you extra resources or extra stats or, or things of that nature. So here are our jobs. So these are all jobs. So you're gonna start with two jobs. You just get dealt two randomly at the start of the game. And again, these are kind of hidden scoring. Um, there's two types, essentially. One type, which you see this banner at the top, uh, gives you resources whenever you complete them. And then the second type here, you keep hidden until end game, and then you reveal it to score points. So for instance, the Taskmaster, at the end of the game, score three grit for every job you've completed. So you're not going to reveal this at any point during the game. You're just going to hang on to it. And then at the end of the game, it's going to be worth X amount of points. The regular jobs require you to do things. So this one requires you, I believe, just to go to the runes here. And whenever you do that, you're going to have it, you know, face down. You're going to reveal it, say, hey, I have this job. You're going to gain four water and gain five grit. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the farmhand requires you to move three during a round. And if you do that, you're going to get those resources. All right, so that's it for the base game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deluxe expansion. So the deluxe expansion adds essentially just more content, more of everything you've seen here, but it does add two more characters, which okay. allows you to play with up to six players instead of the normal four. So here's just what's in the expansion, basically, and a few new rules. So here are the boards for our two new characters. Again, nice double layered boards, nice and thick. They are 
they got a very slight bend to them, but nothing too noticeable. Extra bags, extra figures. So we have the figures, obviously, for our, our two new characters. But we also have these immortal creatures, which is a new new rule set, basically, that you can play the game with that I'm not particularly familiar with. But uh, we'll see when we get to it. Um, you have wooden tokens to replace the cardboard for your water. More of those. You have some new cubes for your new characters and then your extra cubes for their ammo and their, their curse level. New rings. So two new player rings. You have this coin that replaces the first player marker. So this is this would be your new first player marker. And then we have additional cards. These, I believe, are promos for other games. That's why they don't really make sense with what we've been talking about. But we got our new characters, Alistair and Zaamado. And then, of course, their cursed versions as well. We've got some new bounties here. So I guess you just choose which ones to use in this version. Here are our fallen immortals. So those new figures that we saw. These are more just most wanted bounties. Here are Alistar's class deck cards and the other characters class deck cards. We got some extra events here. So this is how the immortals come out. It looks like these are cursed location quests again, because you have the three options and then regular events depending on where you are on the board. More cursed events. And it looks like these are just new versions. Oh no, these are more promo cards. So this is for a different game entirely. But that's it. That's everything you get in The Few and Cursed by Rock Manor Games. That's both the base game and the deluxe expansion.